So what you saying? Money. Get out my business. Okay. All right, everybody. Hey, how you doing? My name is Hero. This is the Identity Booth Podcast. Uh, this is the neat things I forgot to tell you last week. Mostly things I forgot to tell you three weeks ago. But I'm not about to do a three week recap. I'm just going to do the things I forgot to tell you last week. That's the name of the show. Um, in no particular order, but in a rush because Nafi wants to get her segment out of the way so she can get to sleep on time. Uh, if, if you were, unless you were under a rock this past Sunday, you saw Ocho Cinco get slayed and knock the heck down, and immediately want to go fist bump the person. It's such a football thing. When football players get a good hit on another football player, it is our automatic de facto to be like, good hit. Like, yeah, we like that. Like, we were, we would encourage you to do it again. And it was such a football player move. But uh, Ocho Cinco fought. Don't know if he won or lost. Um, the only person that was worth mentioning here was probably Logan Paul and Mayweather. They fought. And to Logan Paul's credit, he got the praise of the best fighter pound for pound of our of our current lifetime and who is actively boxing and that's and that's a w for him uh the fight was not scored on site uh it would it was announced in advance that there would be no announced winners so and this wasn't even going to be sanctioned by the florida state department but uh espn and a bunch of other places all decided cbs all decided to rate the boxing and then as you can see here the total was 79 in favor of mayweather over paul's 73 got to keep in mind uh, mayweather is uh paul mayweather is 18 years his senior six inches uh an additional six inches in reach about 50 pounds more heavier uh, the, uh, Paul is 50 pounds heavier than Mayweather. Uh, this wasn't a fight. Uh, this was by no way means a fair fight. But um, with the skill set that Mayweather has, this is this was an easy fight for him. And he made $100 million. And people are talking about, oh, he tarnished the legacy of, of boxing. What legacy? What What's left? Boxing is being out outran by WWF and UFC. I, I see those two things on my timeline more than I see boxing until now. So whatever they got to do to keep boxing in, in the name, in the mind's eye of people, good on you. But this was all staged for publicity. It's all for fun. It's all for money. And there's a critical point if you're a, fi if you're a fighter, if you're a person who, who understands boxing. Watching this clip right here that we found is pretty much proof all you need of the fact that you know at some point uh your boy jake paul got knocked out and in an effort to keep the fight going floyd mayweather helped him and this is the clip boom right there he's sleep he's sleep right there floyd hit him in the chin and put him to sleep right there and he kept him up. He's holding him up. You see how he clinched him? Floyd didn't have to clinch him there. So for all the people that are talking about that Floyd doesn't have knockout power, ask Jake Paul to tell, him, tell us about the three seconds of his life he can't remember in this exact moment. And that will be all the proof you need. Uh, I was Like I said, I didn't watch the fight. I didn't pay for the fight. But I am happy that these type of fights are going on. I can't wait to see his other brother fight, that, U that UFC fighter. Who hasn't won a match in like four years, but he is a UFC fighter. So we'll be it'll be super interesting to see how that goes. But this was this was exactly what it was supposed to be. A, a show. And if you're interested, you watch. It's showtime, baby. Uh the new Loki uh series comes to Disney Plus tomorrow. If you have a VPN and you change your location to New Zealand or Australia, you can actually watch the first episode right now. Uh, I'm really enamored with the whole Loki uh, thing. The reviews are the early reviews are saying that it's better than uh, Captain America and the Winter Soldier series, and it's better than WandaVision series. Uh, I think between WandaVision and uh, the Captain America and the Winter Soldier. If I had to put them in order, it would be Captain America and the Winter Soldier. It was better than WandaVision. That's just my personal thing. Another thing to know is that I have an extreme bias because in the top three of my favorite movies from Marvel is 
Captain America and the Winter Soldier. So I loved seeing the conclusion of this story and seeing the 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 social commentary on the topic. So that's out. I don't, like I said, it's gonna take a lot for me to come back to Marvel. When that's when that last snap happened, that was pretty much the end of my my time in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But this might be enough to bring me back. I'll, I'll continue to see what the early reviews say because it's sort of like this Doctor Who thing, and I'm pretty interested in seeing what they do with it. Um, currently, right now, there is. Let me see if I can find a picture. There's a there's a 35 34 year old woman who's sitting who was in jail and it's just been released on bond for posing as her 13 year old daughter at school and a lot of people are giving her uh we're giving her shit about this we're saying like you know she did that like she basically because you have to wear a mask at school and and given what kids can wear at school she just basically put on a hoodie put on a mask and pretended to be her 13 year old daughter as a 34 year old woman and there's a part of me that can immediately hear this is creepy as fuck because if this was a dude that she wouldn't be getting nearly half the credit she's getting um but the fact that she was able to do this and do this for seven periods which is basically a full day of school they have eight periods at this school so she was able to go to lunch she was able to, she greeted the principal. She managed to trick the principal. And her whole point of now that she's said that this has all been done and said for, she said it was a social experiment. But in the reality of the situation, right, if we're being real with, with, with everything, she basically skirted security of this school for eight hours. And if this was a, a, a person, a person who didn't belong in the school, they basically could have skirted security for eight hours. That means that this person could, anybody could sneak into the school. She just proved the point that uh, of poor security of this school, and the school has yet to make a comment on that. But everyone's kind of focused on her committing this crime, which is trespassing. While I'm more concerned on the latter side, because she does make a valid point. She was able to skirt the security and beat them at their own game. And it begs the question, if she could do this, who else can do it? And I, I, I wasn't. It's not a. It's not a difficult question to ask, especially in today's climate where school shootings are a big thing. But for all the people that have grown tired of walking in public and looking down at their phone and being afraid that a bus is going to run them over as they blindly cross the street because they're so focused on the phone, there's a new app that's being incorporated with new technology that's going to put a fake third eye on your forehead and function as a tesla super sensor thing where it'll basically be helping to tell you about your surroundings while looking at your phone and giving you signals via your phone to let you know about oncoming danger uh this sounds ridiculous because it is but it does have important implications because what we found out and is if a person who I, every time I go out, I always like try and get an electric car or a self-driving car because I want to better understand the technology. But also, if anyone who's ever driven it, you realize that those cars will overcorrect you for the littlest infraction. And it's super crazy to me to see it sometimes and how like people respond or act to it. But I'm a person who's a big believer in the self-driving automotive things. But using cars on this grand level for an experiment makes it difficult for us to get any idea of what's really going on so using human beings in every excuse me in everyday interactions such as walking up and down a busy street is a perfect example a perfect way to test out this theory so i'm okay with this but if it being used strictly for people because this is actually a big problem like China and Japan where people will walk into the middle of the street and get hit by cars because they're looking at their phone. So it's definitely something to think about. And we have the vice president in the news for a number of things. But more importantly, because of the BS she was saying at the Guatemala border and the conversation she had, I really feel like she wasn't prepared to have these conversations, but it all kind of started with this interview that then led to more backlash. So let's just hear this real quick. Okay. Do you have any plans to visit the border? I, at some point, you know, I, we are going to the border. We've been to the border. So you, this whole, this whole, this whole thing about the border, we've been to the border. 
We've been to the border. You haven't been to the border. I, Facts. And I haven't been to Europe. Facts. And I, mean, I, don't, I don't understand the point that you're making. I'm not discounting the importance of the border. Well, I, I, I mention I, it because I, you've been, I, I know Republicans have certainly come at you on this, but Democratic Congressman Cuellar as a border district has said to the, you and the president, come, you need, I to, care you need about, to see this. Listen, I care about what's happening at the border. I'm in Guatemala because my focus is dealing with the root causes of migration. There may be. And this is more BS talking points. The root cause of this, the, the stifling nature of South America right now is America. America has done everything in its power to make sure that they could never stand on their own on a socioeconomic level without the help of America. And they've also made sure that their military, their trade and their transport and their whole quality of life has never improved past America because America can't have a, a bunch of brown people being a threat to them. And that's an issue. And what she's doing is propagating white supremacy in an effort to hold on to capitalism and Western imperialistic ideas, which shame on her. Furthermore, her speech while at Guatemala was talking about how she was telling people, don't come here. And it wasn't like you couldn't have dressed that sentence up any better. It was a very stern, direct, don't come here, don't come here, with two pauses. Hey, Kamala, you know what the fuck the Statue of Liberty is doing in front of our country i don't even know the whole fucking verse but i know it says bring me your weak bring me your poor so if someone is weak and poor and they want to come here which they legally have the ability to do there's no such thing as an illegal immigrant in a country full of illegal immigrants so i don't agree with this notion of hers it's a talking point it's a trash bag one but i'm also not a person that believes that a cop and a drug dealer could fix this country but maybe I'm just being a little biased. Uh, oh, I love this story. So here, I hope you guys can see this. Yeah. So here is apparently it is uh, National Gay Pride Month uh, for the month. So for the month of June, uh, we will be celebrating gay people in our community, in our society. And I love the fact that... A lot of these companies thought like, oh, we support gay people, too. And I love that Vice made a list of a bunch of companies who say they're for the gay people, uh, but their politics and their money spending and their antics and policies say something way different. So here's just a, a few names. I'll put this in the description later on. But Pfizer, who's been world renowned for, you know, all of their great work that they've done with the pandemic, you know, no no knock on them on that. But they did donate like fifteen one million dollars to fifty two different anti 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 gay politicians in twenty eighteen. Citigroup come out with this, but you know, they had a, a great event in or in uh, Brazil uh, notoriously anti-gay president, like uh, they sponsoring him and doing that stuff. Disney has so is Disney is forever trying to make sure that their image is spit clean. But if you Google pictures of Walt Disney with cigarettes, you see a bunch of pictures with Walt's doing this, but he has nothing in his hand. It's because they edited out the cigarettes from his hands because he was always smoking around kids. So Walt Disney, go fuck yourself. The FBI, we know. Uh, Especially with the misinformation that happened when uh, the AIDS pandemic was going on and the information that the FBI put down. It's just crazy. There's a, this list goes on and on at Uber for sure. Spotify with their like because they wanted they were getting money from Christian groups. Google. Same thing. NFL definitely is a big thing. But there's a this list is pretty in, pretty in depth. And I like the examples they gave. Definitely check it out, but not everyone who says they're your friend is really your friend. Um, check your check your your log history before you out here uh, taking thanks from just anybody. Um, and I Memorial Day just passed up, but I couldn't pass up the opportunity to talk about this story. It's a great story about basically this decorated general, as you'll see, is talking about the true origins of Memorial Day, which he believes. And what history tells us, like, this is for all those critical race theory people. This isn't critical race theory. This is just the, the truth. And the truth hurts. But in the middle of telling the truth about this story, 
He was cut off by a white woman trying to protect white supremacy. Let's hear about it. We start today, this afternoon, with the story of out of Hudson that has actually garnered some national attention. A decorated veteran had his mic cut for several minutes during his speech at a Memorial Day remembrance. Will Ewick joins us live now from Hudson with the very latest. Will, good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon, Jay, and you're right. The story has really taken on a life of its own, and it all began here on Monday in Hudson, right here at a what seemed like a very normal Memorial Day observance ceremony. Then the keynote speaker, retired Lieutenant Colonel Bernard Kempter, tells me that he thought it was an audio glitch at first, and in the video you can see and hear him tap the mic, ask about the mic fading out. Well, it turns out that he was muted for several minutes when he spoke about freed black slaves honoring fallen soldiers after the Civil War and its importance in creating Memorial Day. Kempter tells me that he was disappointed that it happened and that all he wanted to do was educate people on the history of Memorial Day. Mayor Craig Schubert tells me that he and city council are appalled this happened and it was in the work of a few event organizers that told him after the fact that they requested part of the speech be omitted several times due to several recent racial concerns in Hudson and wanting to keep the event focused on Hudson veterans, something the mayor says he's in total disagreement with. It truly disrespected uh, a decorated military officer. Uh, it diminished the story of the African-American slaves who had contributed to that first Memorial Day. And, and thirdly, those who were in attendance did not have an opportunity to hear the full story and the meaning behind it. There has to be something that needs to be said uh, about people, like white people's fragility in just hearing the basic truth. For all the effort that goes into trying to keep shit like this under wraps, you really do a disservice to yourself when you don't let these things come out. He like he was just doing something that would just bring us closer. If you were so concerned about the racial tension of your community, or if you were so paralyzed by racial tension, what better way to break that tension than show that back in the day, a bunch of slaves forgave a bunch of people who oppressed them enough to properly bury them. And for all you guys that don't know the context story, basically a bunch of Union soldiers after uh, after surrendering to the rebel, they were murdered and buried in a mass grave. And these free slaves as travelers found this mass grave and decided to decorate and individually bury each soldier. And that's where the first memorialization of uh, veterans happened. And that's a very touching thing to do, very touching thing to see. So it's just baffling to me that they've like this. This event organizer was fired and she's uh, she's been fired and removed from the uh, event organization board for the Hudson City. So uh, you got your come up and speak. Hope it was worth it. Um this right here is fascinating to me, but it's also, once again, showing about the capitalism, the greed, and the, the just a fractured notion of our broken system. Uh, Biogen is facing tough questions about the $56,000 a year price for a newly approved Alzheimer's drug. This drug basically is boasting that it has the ability to minimize your potential to get Alzheimer's or to minimize the in, in rate of de degradation of your mind while you have Alzheimer's. And all of these are coming as huge maybes because the FDA trial is clouded in question and is being requested to have a post 56 day uh, referendum where they basically reevaluate the drugs on new, fully tested, uh, fully dedicated patients. and. For something that doesn't have a hundred percent, not a hundred percent, nothing is a hundred percent except for your death, but in the medical community, as good as it can be for a hundred percent, for something that doesn't have the seal of this will help you, that's a lot of money to be giving away for a maybe. And if you think about just the insulin crisis that's going on in this country and how insulin prices are going through the roof, and you can literally go to any one of the northern northern canada or uh new mexico uh, or mexico and get insulin 
for pennies on the dimes by comparison it just makes it it just makes it so much more clear what healthcare is about in america and how truly fascinating it is that we were able to get through this pandemic with all these things going on because look at what they're doing this is disgusting on so many levels and it just this is this is why universal healthcare needs to be a thing so companies like this don't get to do these things if you're not if you're only like for maybe go fuck yourself i hate this um hey i don't know if you guys know this but uh black people do get sunburned not black people like me but black people a little bit lighter than me and for that reason i want to bring this to your attention there's been a bunch of recalls on sunscreen this summer this year because of benzene uh it's probably a benzene iodine combination chemical mix but it's com- is extremely potent and it does cause uh some skin cancer and can cause other types of cancers uh especially if they're being applied over other vital organs and stuff like that there's a whole read up and mock up on that check your uh check the cdc website listing to see if your product is underneath or check your sun cream's, sunscreen's product uh website to make sure that you're not part of that whole ordeal and finally for the show you are looking at the full representation of the 2021's gymnastic representation for the united states the first time in american history where we've had an all black uh representation represented group and hey more power to you more kudos to you i don't traditionally watch gymnastics but I think I might have a vested interest in it today. I might have it on in the background. I think it's pretty dynamic, and I'm pretty interested to see what these women will be bringing to the stage. I always want to call them girls because they're just small individuals, but the truth is like they're like grown-ass people. But I'm excited to see that. Hopefully, they can put on a great show and uh, bring home some gold. And Nafi told me before I went on that uh, I believe, what's her name? What's her name? I want to say Simone. I'm not sure if it's Simone, but she basically killed it. She uh, she won like her seventh medal, and she's like doing the damn thing. So I'm happy to see, I'm happy to see that that's a, a thing that's going on there. But you know, that's neither here or there. Uh, that's been the things you need to know. Uh, segment of this. I hope you guys enjoy this. I'm clearly very rusty, so uh, forgive me as I get my you know my bearings about me but while you're at it please subscribe to the channel like share post this simone uh bows is that bows okay Beals? Mm. my dyslexia is kicking in but i appreciate you guys uh like share subscribe comment let us know some things that you want us to cover next time tell us about some stuff that we missed last week but it's so hard to find through the daily grind we're working overtime and I'm sleep deprived, shorty on my line and we fuzz and fight Seems like every night, don't care who's wrong or right I hope the end is like, slow it down